Hi friends, welcome to another M to the 3rd knitting vlog. My name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the 3rd. In this video, we're going to dye yarn together and attend the Rose City Yarn Crawl. If you're new here, hi, welcome, and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. The weeks leading up to the Rose City Yarn Crawl, I spent largely in my basement dyeing yarn. Now I naturally dye yarn, which is a little different from your typical acid, acid dyes. So before I add any dye pigment or dye stuff to the yarn, I do a step that is called mordanting, which is what I'm showing you here. Mordanting is essentially a step where you apply mineral salts to the surface of the yarn. In my case, that's largely what I dye so that it creates a better bond between the dye molecules and your fiber. So I am weighing out aluminum potassium sulfate, also known as alum, which is one of the more popular mordants for protein fibers, such as wool and silk. Now, after I've weighed it out, I'm going to pull my pot over and pre-soak my yarn. You want it to be wet before adding your mordant. Off screen, I am boiling water, um, which I will add to my weighed out mordant mineral salts um, so that it can dissolve before being added to the dye pot. After it's dissolved, I add it to the pot with all the water and then um, I bring it up to just below simmering on a like induction burner. Heat is a really important step of the process. It's not essential, but it speeds it up quite a lot. Um, I do a lot of my dyeing in batches, so I will get all of my yarn mordanted before moving on to the dye process. It just makes everything go a little bit smoother. But mordanting itself takes about two hours from start to finish and then it sits overnight before being rinsed the following day and remember this is the step before the actual dyeing natural dyeing is absolutely a labor of love and um, you might notice that my yarn is maybe priced a little higher than you're used to and that's just because there's a lot of labor that goes into it so this is the first little bit of mordanting um, and Pun intended, we rinse and repeat a lot. I don't actually have a water hookup on my side of the basement. Um, so I live in a duplex and my cousin lives on the other side. So I have access to both our garden hose and her water hookup. Um, and this is a way that I rinse yarn by just filling up a bunch of buckets and kind of bringing it down the line. And then I like to basically put all the yarn through a spin cycle to get any excess water out before um, laying it out to dry. So again, it's a pretty labor intensive process. Um, I find myself needing to do a lot of yoga on heavy dye weeks just to make sure no muscles are seizing up. And then I lay it to dry under a fan overnight. So like I said, this was a lot of weeks of getting ready for the crawl. And all of this yarn is now listed on my website if you're interested in taking a look. That's always linked down below. Of course, after dyeing and drying, it's not the end of the process. The last step is to wind all of the skeins into their hanks so that they look nice and pretty, and then also label. I'm very fortunate that my mom was able to come over and help me label um, because I was running out of time in preparing. So 
yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, each skein, um, in this case, it was about 200 skeins, was, um, you know, wound into its little cute hank and then set aside to add the label to. I'm really, really happy with how this batch of yarn came out. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen me talking about the palette that I have been working on um, for the last couple years. Um, I really finally feel like I have a palette that feels like me um, and that I can rely on when I bring in new bases, which is yeah, something I've been working on. Um, of course, we had to have a little cafecito and chispe while we were <laughs> working on labeling the yarn. And then I also was finishing up a sample that I wanted to have on my table for the yarn crawl. So yeah, here are just a few clips for those days leading up to the crawl. And then I will catch you again in a moment to um, set up for my trunk show. I didn't realize how janky my hair looks, but anyway, hi. <laughs> um, so I just went to my first shop for yarn crawl. Didn't end up getting anything, but it was Weird Sisters, which is in St. John's, which is like the northernmost stop on yarn crawl. Ran into Tatiana from Tumalo Fibers and Kate, um, who uh, was just recently the president of the Puddle Town Knitters Guild. So that was fun. Um, now I'm going to, I think, go to Ritual Dyes, which is in Southeast, which will sort of lead me to Starlight. Um, I thought I would stop at more stores, but honestly, I'm like kind of not feeling it. So um, yeah, let's go. Lighting is bad, but um, just tried to go to Close Knit, which is like one of the smaller stores, like physical space. Um, I'm cutting it close. Like they close at five. Um, and it's like, I had like 15 minutes. So as I was walking up, there's a huge line outside. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> let's, uh, let's skip that one. <laughs> so I'm going to go to ritual dyes and, um, see if I can find parking over there and then head to starlight afterwards. So yeah. <laughs> I can go on walking when I'm sound. 
Um, if I seem a little bit frazzled, it's because I am. <laughs> um, today is my first day off since prepping for crawl, doing crawl. And to be honest, I don't really want to be recording. But what I do want to be doing is casting on some projects with the yarn that I got. So I wanted to sit down and just show you my haul so that I can go wind them up <laughs> and start knitting. Um, I had a blast, like Row City Yarn Crawl is always so much fun, even with the exhaustion. Um, so not only getting ready for a trunk show, having a trunk show there and like getting to meet all of you, but then I also work like the register and that is very like it's just a lot it's just a lot there's a lot of people coming through um everyone that i met everyone who said that you watch my podcast or like my yarn like thank you so much um if you are at crawl please leave a comment um and just say hi tell me what you enjoyed about it and uh yeah yeah i hope you enjoyed the little the little vlog for um the prep and just like some snippets of of the time so I do want to share with you what I bought because I um, had a lot of fun shopping the trunk shows um, I didn't get to many stores because I only had one day off um, during it so I did make it out to weird sisters and ritual dyes which are um, the closest ones to me so So on Thursday, I was at Starlight Knitting Society doing a trunk show, and so was Tatiana of Tumalo Fibers. Um, and I couldn't help myself with this just beautiful palette. Um, she also had some amazing colors, but I didn't really want a worsted weight. This is like a, oh, hello Maple. Welcome to the recording session. <laughs> Um, so these colors, they are all this amazing tweed sport weight. Also, Tatiana includes little um, stitch markers in each skein, which like seems like a pain to put on. So like props to her. <laughs> um, but this palette was really speaking to me and 
I have been really wanting to make um, a granny square like pull over a big granny square in the center with some sleeves and so that's kind of what I was envisioning for these I might need more um, but this is like a really good 500 gram starting point um, and these colors like I said were just really speaking to me oh aren't they so good okay <laughs> um, so I got that from Tatiana um, her, she just has, she, the amount of yarn that she is able to dye is pretty incredible. So that was, it was just really fun to see everything she brought. Um, another thing that I'm keeping in mind for like the future is she had this amazing poppy red, kind of like this, um, that was in a Shaniko wool, um, cashmere blend that kind of regret not getting a skein of, but... Um, you know, there's only so much that um, I could justify. So um, the next day, Friday, was the day that I was kind of going around. I went to Weird Sisters and they had um, a lot of really amazing things, um, buttons in particular, but I just didn't have the bandwidth to really like look through all of them. Um, I was just kind of like, just wanted to pop in and just kind of see what the vibe was, but um, Fuchsia uh, said hi, who is the owner over there, um, and we chatted for a little bit, and then I ran into Tatiana, who was crawling with um, our friend Kate, so that was really fun. And then I headed over to Ritual Dyes, where, um, yeah, they had a lot of good stuff going on, but in particular, I ran into a viewer who was looking at... Um, the Ritual Dye Spin Cycle colorways, and she was picking for a project, and uh, I startled her a little bit by popping up next to her, and <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but she was looking at like all these beautiful skeins, and this one caught my eye, and I am sorry to say, embarrassed to say, that I plucked it out of her hands, and I was like, can I have this one? And she was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is their colorway written in the stars. It's really, really pretty right up my alley. So that is also going in the stash. And I will tell you, um, all of the yarns that I picked fully coordinate with one another, which is not, I think, surprising. Um, I definitely have like a palette. It's kind of also the palette that I dye my yarn in. But um, looking at all of it spread out, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I have a vibe. I have a vibe. Um, and then I headed to Starlight that night for the um, Starlight Knit Night, which is what I host weekly. Um, it's usually on Wednesdays from six to eight, but this week, we, because of Crawl, we ended up having it on Saturday night. So um, yeah, we just had a really good time just knitting and chatting with everyone. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just, I just love a knit night. I love a knit night and this one was really fun. <laughs> So um, that led into Saturday. So I worked Saturday and Sunday at just retail on the floor. Um, we had two trunk shows or three trunk shows on Saturday, which were Lavender Loon um, and Beautiful Sisters and Brohu Ceramics. Um, and so of course, of course, they were calling and I couldn't resist. Um, so in particular, me and my coworker Susan just fell in love with this amazing hemp yarn. So it's superwash merino and then 20% hemp. And I don't know how she got the hemp to take up like this mauve color and then the rest of the wool to take on that green. But I'm obsessed. Susan and I both got, I think Susan took home five skeins, I took home four, and we can like renegotiate the custody. <laughs> of the skeins, but I already have a plan for this. And this is one of the reasons that I wanted to record this because I want to start knitting. It's just such a good colorway. Um, I also got this project bag from Beautiful Sisters. So um, these are so cool. So we have these at the shop usually, but we always get I don't know, the fabric, this fabric was speaking to me. Of course, again, I've got a palette and it's here. So you can like hold it on your arm and put your little project here and just knit from the bag. So that's one thing. Then when you're done, you can like pop this down to kind of hold everything in place. 
and then tie it in a little um, bento bag situation, hold everything. And then you can also like fold all of this stuff down or fold these over and have a little knitting like basket like that. So a really versatile, fun project bag and they were so sweet. It was, I hadn't um, had the chance to meet them yet. So that was really nice. So this is their Heather style bag. And again, I love the fabric. We do have some of these in store at Starlight in um, this colorway, but also a couple different colorways. They're not listed online, but um, yeah, they're in store. So if you're like, ooh, I wish I would have grabbed one of those, you do have the opportunity to. Then I got, so my mom helped me tag like all of my yarn for my trunk show, which was incredibly helpful. So I got her one of these, I've already gifted her hers. And then, but basically these little like bud vases that are so cute. So um, I got my mom one that was like pink and yellow and then my sister, this blue green one. And I am still working on her muscle burrow, but I'm like well into skein number two. So when I ship that off to her, which is technically her birthday present, I'm gonna include that little vase in there. And then, that leads us into Sunday. Saturday night, Kay and I went out to eat pasta. I just was like, I need to carb load. And I had like chicken fettuccine Alfredo and it was bless. Um, and then Sunday we had um, Crow and Crescent, who is a like goth indie dyer, um, just north, based north of Seattle. Um, her yarn was stunning, amazing. Um, we still have it at the shop, so I, held off on getting any for the trunk show. Um, but just like totally beautiful, totally fun. If you don't know them, you should definitely give them a follow. And then second, I'm sure you already follow him. <laughs> but Ross of Twisted Ambitions was there. He brought so much beautiful yarn. They were like such an amazing contrast because Ross is just like a neon ray of sunshine um and everyone was like so sweet like it was just like the vibes were excellent for especially the last day when we were all like <sighs> um so I got a couple of skeins from Ross and again we're like in the same kind of color story these like oranges and mauves these are both like a sock weight they're just so beautiful they're just so beautiful so yeah, and let me, I'm gonna get an armful here for you just so you can kind of see my vibe. Like, they all, yeah, I know. <gasps> oh God, okay. So this is my haul. Yeah, so I had a really great time. I hope you can tell. I hope you had fun going on this journey with me. And um, I'm gonna go wind up some yarn and get, get knitting and crocheting. All right, love you guys, bye.